This video describes how to encode digital data using analog signals. So this can be done by changing the amplitude, frequency, or phase of a periodic repeating wave. For example, one approach is known as amplitude shift keying. And this approach involves having a wave that either has a positive amplitude or an amplitude of zero to encode the bits one and zero. In fact, the formula over time looks like this. So S is the function for the signal that is being transmitted and T is the current time of the transmission. And if we are encoding a binary one at that time, then the signal is some amplitude times cosine of two pi times some carrier frequency times the time. Otherwise, zero is the voltage of the signal. So we can see what this looks like in the following example. I've brought out this lined paper again so we can clearly see the delineation of each signal element. I'll be encoding this binary string using amplitude shift keying. So whenever there is a zero, we simply have a flat line of zero voltage. But whenever there is a one, we will have some wave with a given amplitude. Now the number of sort of ripples within a single uh, signal element depends on what the carrier frequency is. But it ultimately doesn't matter too much for how ASK works, it's just a matter of a technical detail. So here, when we're encoding ones, we have a wave that's fluctuating. And then when we go back to zero, we have a flat line again. And then for the one, we'll have the wave again, and then flat for zero, and then waving for the one. And that's throughout here as well. And then two more flat portions for zeros, and so on and so forth until we reach the end. So visually, there's a very clear distinction between the zeros and the ones. For the zeros, we have a flat line. And for the ones, we have a repeating wave. But this is not the only way to encode digital data using analog signals. Instead of changing the amplitude, we could instead change the frequency. And one scheme for doing this is binary frequency shift keying. Now, strictly speaking, amplitude shift keying is also binary in that there are only two options. Um, the reason that binary shift keying explicitly uses the word binary here is that there's another scheme called multi frequency shift keying, uh, where we can encode more signals than just zeros and ones. But if we're only encoding zeros and ones, we have a formula that looks like the following. This function, like the previous one, encodes the signal as a function of time, and we still have an amplitude cosine and a 2 pi. The only difference between encoding a 1 or a 0 is that the frequencies are different. We have one frequency that we'll use for encoding a binary 1, and a different frequency that we'll use for encoding a binary 0. If we use a frequency of 1 for binary 0 and a frequency of 2 for binary 1, we get a result that looks like the following. I'll be using this line paper once again to show how this signal gets encoded for this bit string. So recall that we're going to use a frequency of 1 for the zeros. So when I have a 0, I will do a single wave like so. And I'll repeat that for the next zero. But then when I encounter the one, I'm going to double the frequency. And so I'll have twice as many peaks, and it'll look like this. And we have another one. And then when we go back to zero, we get only a single wave in that interval.
So I can carry along and encode this the rest of the way. And we'll see that for the zeros, we have waves that look like these. And for the ones, we have waves with higher frequency that look like these. And so we have this final result where we have 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, encoded by changing the frequency which, uh, for each signal element. Now I mentioned that we are not limited to using two frequencies. We can actually create a scheme known as multiple frequency shift keying, and the formula looks like the following. So this generic formula looks just like this one, except we've generalized the frequency. And I've put here that we're encoding different values of i, but we have to pick the values of i and the frequency in such a way that we span the range of possible values we're encoding. So i will actually be in a given range, and we will spread the frequencies out within that range to make sure that each of them is distinct. However, as you may be able to imagine, as the number of different frequencies we use increases, it can be increasingly difficult to actually discern the distinction between different frequencies. So there is a risk of having trouble discerning the signal that comes with using this approach. Of course, the benefit of it is that we can encode more data per single signal element. For example, rather than simply encoding binary values of 0 and 1, we could encode values of 0, 1, 2, and 3, which would correspond to binary bits of 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. The last encoding method we'll be discussing is binary phase shift keying. This approach will use essentially the same base formula as the others, but now we will be changing the phase of our signal rather than the frequency or the amplitude. The formula looks like this. So by adding in this value of pi, we shift this signal to a different phase. We are once again using a carrier frequency, but it will be the same frequency for both encoding a binary 0 and a binary 1. Now I've written these out to the side because if you remember your trigon trigonometric identities, we can actually simplify this a bit further. So when we want to encode a binary 0, we simply take the binary 1 signal and negate it. And that is effectively the same as shifting the phase by pi. If we use a carrier frequency of 2, the result will look like this. So we will encode a 0 using the shifted phase. So this 0 gets encoded with a wave that starts on a downward path, like so. And then we repeat that with the next 0. But when we switch to a 1, the phase shift causes the wave to look like this. And also the next signal. For the next 0, we shift the phase, so we reverse directions. And then for the 1, we reverse the direction again. And if we continue this process, we'll get the following result. So you can see in this final result that whenever I switch from a 0 to a 1, I get a direction change in the wave, this sort of sharp change that is on the upward end. And whenever I go from a 1 to a 0, I get a similar sharp change, but on the bottom end. So whenever I'm not switching peaks for a long period, like here, that is a sequence of the same element.
So these three encoding schemes here represent three relatively straightforward means of encoding digital data with analog signals. They take advantage of the primary features of a periodic wave. We can modify the amplitude, frequency, or the phase.